Hey guys, so tonight we're going to talk about urinary diversion and devices. Sometimes these can be a little confusing, so hopefully this will clarify some things for you. So what's the purpose? So when we're talking about diversions or like ostomies and stuff like that for the urinary tract system, um, they help to create a path for urine to exit. So maybe there's a blockage, there's cancer, some sort of obstruction. Um, so they help to create an opening. Whereas other devices we talked about like Foley's, superpubic catheters, pure wicks, condom catheters, et cetera, like all of these more help to contain urine, get an accurate intake and output and prevent worsening of skin breakdown for some of them. So now let's talk about who gets a Foley. So, um, you know, uh, really the only people that get Foley's um, today are going to be those that have a good reason to. So those that are end of life, uh, maybe those that are critically ill that need a really accurate intake and output, um, those with severe skin breakdown and um, during surgical, certain surgical procedures. And there might be a couple other, but those are some of the big ones. Um, so you have to have an order. And sometimes you have to have an order, depending on your hospital policy, renewed every day. Sometimes it's every other day. But um, it used to be that most patients just got catheters. But now with the increase in the amount of infections related to those catheter insertions, they're not um, as openly um, given as what they used to be. Um, and so um, preventing those infections are priority. And now that in most hospitals have what's called a nurse-driven protocol, which means that um, it's a protocol that nurses can follow that, um, you know, if the patient meets certain protocol, um, sorry, certain, um, if they have like certain um, uh, facts about them, like, you know, like if they meet certain criteria, that's the word I'm looking for, if they meet certain criteria, then a nurse can actually remove a client's Foley if they um, meet this criteria without a doctor's order. So in other words, it's things that kind of help to support a nurse to remove a catheter without having to like, you know, call a doctor in the middle of the night or something like that if it's appropriate to remove that catheter. So how do I prevent this infection? If my you know, big goal is to prevent this infection, how do I do this? I'm going to clean that catheter Q-shift. In some hospitals, you have to clean with like a HebaCleanse material, something like that, or um, a HebaCleanse clean, cleanser or cleaner. Um, doing sterile insertion or um, you do like with the buddy system, like, you know, where, where I work, um, you have to, you can, um, if you're going to insert a Foley catheter, a charge nurse um, has to be there with you um, to insert that, not even just like a neighbor, it has to be a charge nurse or someone who's trained in leadership to insert that with you to make sure that it's sterile and inserted. I want to keep it below heart level, so dependent drainage. I don't want to hold it above the patient's heart level. I want to keep a closed circuit. There's a seal on it. We want to make sure never to break that or open that. And as soon as possible, I want to take that catheter out. Um, there's lots of other ways to contain urine. So um, these ways are not going to um, uh, you know, contain urine um, in a way that's not going to, you know, still put them at risk for skin breakdown, but it's still going to help us to maybe if we're, if we need to like have a more accurate intake and output, if the patient, um, you know, is having like really bad skin breakdown everywhere and we're trying to contain that at least a little bit, um, we can also use these devices. So there's pads and chucks. We're really moving away from diapers. You don't really see those in the hospital anymore. Um, there's also pure wick catheters, which are those external female catheters um, that um, literally are attached to a suction, that kind of suction. Um, condom catheters for men um, that uh, are an external catheter. And there's even just general pouches. So, you know, some men have more of an any than an Audi um, with their penis. And so, um, you know, a pouch allows us to still contain that, collect that urine if they maybe, we can't get a condom cath uh, catheter on them because of the size or um, anatomy that they have going on. Um, remember, again, these are not perfect. Um, there is still incontinence, so we do need to monitor the skin closely. These, um, these can still lead to some skin issues. So always just watching closely. Uh, so then we talked about diversions. And so diversions are, again, for patients with cancer, obstructions, maybe stenosis of some of the urinary tract. They need to have a way to get urine out. So there's a creation of an ostomy or other device. Um, they can, um, when it comes to the ostomies, they can have an, an external pouch to collect the urine, like what most people would think of like on the abdomen, or they can have an internal pouch or they can create an internal pouch to store and drain their urine. Um, so the three types we kind of touched on were urostomy, which is, um, comes out of the bladder, a ureterostomy, which comes out of the ureters, and a nephrostomy, which comes out of the kidneys. Now, these might seem very, um, uh, you know, uh, confusing, but effectively they're just in different places. And you as the nurse don't need to know which one the patient needs. That's a, that's a doctor's choice and all of these things. Doctors are going to perform these surgeries and decide this, but you just need to know well, how do I manage all of these things. So for like a urostomy, that's the external 
um, what, uh, an external uh, diversion. Um, you know, I need to monitor skin and the stoma or that external, um, you know, um, piece that uh, where urine's going to be coming out for breakdown. So I need to be monitoring that closely. For an internal, so if a patient has an um, a urostomy, but it's a, what's called a Coke pouch. Um, and that's where they actually create, pretty much think of it like, it's almost like creating another bladder, but they're creating a little pouch inside that you can actually catheterize and drain. And that's really nice um, because patients a lot of times have a lot of um, image issues and um, fear and anxiety around having that external pouch and like pee being on the outside of their body. So some patients, not all may qualify for this procedure. And if so, they need to um, uh, drain that pouch every four to six hours to make sure that they does not overfill. There's also ureterostomies, and ureterostomies are those thin little tubes that connect the bladder um, to the kidneys, and so they kind of allow the kidneys to drain, um, you know, urine into the bladder. Um, these are very narrow, and they're very weak, and so um, uh, they can easily collapse on themselves or get stenosis or narrowing, so I need to monitor patients that have those for stricture, or in other words, I need to look to see are they having decreasing urine, urine output, because um, they shouldn't be um, with that device. I mean, there's also what's called a nephrostomy, um, and that's um, you know a literal catheter that's inserted into the um, kidney itself, especially if there's like a really obstructing stone, um, or if there's a problem, maybe all the rest of the urinary tract, they may have a nephrostomy. These are usually temporary, um, and it's a catheter that's not yours inserted in you, so I need to always monitor for infection with those. So hopefully this helped break down um, diversion and devices a little bit and get you feeling a little bit more confident moving into this section. So I'll see you next time.